16-year-old Kieran Noble is at the Edinburgh Sick Kids Hospital for her latest MRI scan. She has been on a trial drug, lorlatinib, for nine months to target neuroblastoma. How are you feeling today? How have you been feeling this week? Stressed. Very stressed. But it's fine because we're thinking positively and that it's going to be a good result. Hopefully. So your three-month and your six-month scan were obviously good results. So even with those two scans, does it not make you feel any more relaxed coming into the nine month? No, definitely not, because you never know what could happen in the three months. You've obviously had a number of MRI scans. When I had my first one, I had like a panic attack in it because it's very claustrophobic, but now I'm used to it and I'm just kind of get on with it. We've been following Kira's journey for the past two years. She was initially diagnosed with a childhood cancer aged 11 and underwent numerous rounds of chemotherapy and major operations. But in 2018, they were faced with raising hundreds of thousands of pounds to undergo an operation by a specialist in New York. If everybody helps us, we could just knock it on the head for once and for all. Communities rallied together to raise the funds, but it's a relentless disease. And last year she was told the cancer had spread again and she was now incurable. That's when they turned to the trial drug, which so far has had positive results. Well, the scan will take between an hour and an hour and a half. Of course, Kira is no stranger to the scan process, but each and every time it's just as stressful as the last. And of course, both for her and her family, it's an anxious wait to see what the results will be this time. What's going through your head right now when you're sitting here? It's always a time of very intense anxiousness when it comes to scan time despite the fact that Kira's done so so many it just never gets any easier. With the trial drug how does that differ to how you feel being on it and what the results are going to be? You've got to do it you've got to try anything I mean your alternative is not a good one so you've absolutely got to go forth and grab the opportunity to use it. What's it been like for you and your family over the past nine months seeing Kira go to school every day, hang out with her friends, doing the things that any other teenager is able to do? Absolutely. It's a dream come true. Our lives have transitioned from her being inst institutionalised, living life in a hospital bed, attached to chemo machines, to um, you know being filled with fake tan acrylic nails, teenage parties, um, just wonderful, really, really wonderful. It's been great. And it is it those little things like the fake tan, like the fake nails, it just brings you joy in those days? It does, it does. The bed covered in fake tan. You don't mind? Don't mind. <laughs> I just could never have dared to dream that it would be as good an experience as it actually has been. At the drop of a hat, quite literally, everything could change and we could get a bad result just like that. That's the scanxiety as you call it over now, yes. but you've still got a week to results. What's that yes. like? Um, that'll be worse than this week because now that the scan's done, it's waiting on the results, and that's the big major thing. But positive thinking? Yes, positive thinking all the way. This play park is really special to us. We've got a lot of happy memories here. Leona Knox would bring her son Oscar to this play park in Belfast when he was undergoing treatment. He absolutely loved it and uh, with Izzy's little sister, um, yeah, we've got some really happy memories from here and some really beautiful family photographs too that are so precious to us now. 
Oscar was only three years old when he was diagnosed with stage four high-risk neuroblastoma. It was completely devastating. I mean, it, it devastated our family. You just don't think that cancer happens to normal people like you, not childhood cancer. Rightly or wrongly, you immediately think of mortality and death. And for us, that's where our minds went straight away as parents. We're, we're going to lose him and he's only three years old. He immediately began 80 days of intense chemotherapy as part of a clinical trial. He got very, very sick very quickly, um, which was also difficult because to us, he hadn't been as sick before he started treatment. And I mean, once Oscar lost his hair, that for us, we, we just felt like this is really dark moment for our family. After a year and a half of gruelling treatment, Oscar was given the all clear and the family enjoyed some normality. But months later, the cancer returned. The devastation of relapse, I mean, you know that the likelihood is that your child is going to die. And it's just an unbelievably difficult thing to try and get your head around. I mean, there's absolutely no point throughout the journey of treating this disease that you accept that that's going to happen. Even if you know it to be true, the acceptance isn't there. And in that moment, we knew this is it. Treatment options for high-risk neuroblastoma are extremely limited. The Knox family found themselves quickly having to make impossible decisions about what treatments to choose. It's a huge pressure as a parent because it really feels like Russian roulette. I mean, if you make the wrong choice, there's every likelihood your child will die. That is how I looked at it as a parent, and that, that's not true. But in that moment, that's how it feels, that it's on you to make the right choice because we're the people who sign the forms. We're the people who live with the consequences. Oscar passed away in 2014. His family said he didn't die because he had cancer, but because they ran out of options to treat it. In the months after, Leona joined the Solving Kids Cancer charity. Her focus on research. After the experience with Oscar, I just couldn't turn my back on it. We can't leave these children to suffer and die as they're doing. We've got to address this problem. Thanks to funding from the Oscar Knox Fund, the trial drug Kira is currently taking is available in the UK. Kira is just so amazing and what she has experienced through this clinical trial, we want even more families to be able to experience the same thing. You know, to not have all the doors closed on you um, whenever your disease, whenever you experience a relapse. Um, and to manage to find a way to live alongside of it and live a good quality of life, which is what Kira is doing, and have fun, not just survive, but to have fun. It's just everything, and I mean, it's our passion and it's what Solving Kids Cancer is all about, and we're so proud to be a part of it. That's Kira and Odd away into the cancer ward for those results. They have their brave faces on, they're feeling positive. I can't even imagine how nerve-wracking this moment must be. You're smiling, how did that go? We're all good. good. It's shrunk more. Wow. So we're doing well and it's all good news. How does that feel? So good, just because you know now it's all done, and it's, don't have any more scans for another three months. So we just keep on going. Congratulations! Yes, that's great news. I'm so pleased for you and yourself too. Odd. Thank you. Come on, in. let's go. Come on. Kira has taken lorlatinib for nine months, and for now, the family enjoys some freedom in knowing she's in a good place. But in three months' time, the scan process will begin again. Come on, go have a drink. It's so scary. It really is so scary. We, we live in, well, I live in a constant state of angst and anxiousness. And the worry never, ever leaves my mind. It wakens me up in the middle of the night thinking about it. It's... It's, it's awful, absolutely awful. How do you now view the future for Kira? I continue to remain positive. 
I just have to keep my fingers crossed that this drug continues to work. You ready? Shall we run? Go ahead. It must have been quite a scary decision that you made, saying, no, I don't want any more chemotherapy, and to go on this trial drug. Um, yeah, no, it definitely was. For me personally, after everything I've gone through with it all, in the last, I think it was the last two, three, four rounds that I had, I was extremely ill. I didn't leave the hospital like at all. I'd be out for a couple of days and then I'd be like back in. And so it just wasn't worth it to me. So thinking that a year later, I'm actually in the most stable place I could be. It's just amazing to know that it is working and that, you know, trial dogs do work. And sometimes they don't, obviously, but, you know, it's just great that this one is. How do you look at your future now? How do you take it week by week, month by month? I just take every day as it comes and just try and live in the moment and have as much fun as I can whilst I can because you never know what the future may hold.